Holy crap, yes, I know it's been a month. One entire month since I have done a video. There's good reason for that. Because it's been one entire month since the last day that I have driven. Stick around, I'll tell you why. Alright, a month ago yesterday, Friday, it was the Friday before the 1st of June, exactly four weeks, I pulled into the West Memphis OC and I was stopping here to get fuel. And as I was pulling through the gate, I just hit a wall. You know, like you're feeling fine, then all of a sudden you hit this wall and you go straight downhill, you just know you're getting sick or you got sick quick. That's what happened to me. I hit a wall. So I stopped here. I got fuel, I parked the truck. And by the time I got to the gate, to the time I parked my truck, which was about 30 minutes, getting fuel, going inside. But this whole time I'm going, I'm just, I'm falling fast, right? I'm falling fast. At this point, when I park the truck, I climb back in the sleeper. It's like 90 degrees out. This is about five o'clock in the afternoon, five o'clock in the evening, right? In West Memphis, it's like 90 degrees out. I'm literally freezing. I am shivering. I can't. I'm uncontrollable shivers. I can't. I, I'm in the sleeper. I got my comforter on. I'm. I'm I, I can't stop trembling. So, um, over the next course of the next couple of days, uh, my fever broke. Uh, from vomiting, uncontrollable um, body functions it was bad it was bad for a few days it was really really bad during that episode my right leg my lower from my knee to my my ankle it started swelling and getting red and started becoming painful um, I'm a type of guy, I never get sick, but usually when I do, it's a fucking doozy. It puts me on my ass. Now, I can't say that I've ever experienced what I experienced this time before, when I've been sick before, but I don't think, I, I can't recall a time to where it came on to me that quickly. And I was uncontrollable trembles, um, trembles, right? So... And I'm the one, I rarely ever go to the doctor. I, I just don't ever go. I just kind of suck it up, work, let, it run, let it run its course, and go through with it. Which is what I was planning on doing here. After about four days, the, the illness eased off, but my leg, my leg got worse. It started blistering. The pain was just so severe, I couldn't even stand on it. I couldn't move. Um... I had blisters all over my leg. They started popping and draining and bleeding and all that. So after a couple more days, so finally on Thursday, the 1st of June, I decided to go to the ER. So I walked into the OC and I asked them to call me an ambulance. They did. Um, I get to the hospital. Everybody's like, what happened? Because it looked like my leg had been burned. Uh, all I could, uh, the only thing I, the only way I could tell them is like, you know, both my legs look normal. All of a sudden, my right leg exploded. That's the only way I can describe to anybody who, what happened. My right leg exploded. Um, so, they started treating me. I was in the hospital for a total of eight days. During that time, I found out that uh, they diagnosed with, um, what is it, sepsis? And I forget that word. And uh, cellulitis. Now, see, I didn't, I guess I still don't understand what cellulitis is because I always kind of thought cellulitis is you know you see a, a really big person like the back of their thighs or their arms or whatever they got that like cottage cheese looking skin like or cauliflower looking. I thought that was cellulitis. I mean, I don't have any of that. What I'm talking about on me, I mean, I'm a big guy, but I don't I don't have any of that kind of textured looking skin. Um. But I always thought that was what cellulitis was, but apparently I still don't know what cellulitis is because uh, that's just the way that's just the way they describe the the and, and the, they 
describe the explosion. Um, but after eight days, I started healing well, and I got released from the hospital. So I have been back in my truck now. Today is the 24th. I got back in my truck on the 10th. The 9th or the 10th. One of those two. But, in order to go back to work, I have to go through, like I said before, Schneider doesn't have their own medical team, the medical department. They outsource this type of stuff. So I had to go through the company they outsource this stuff to to get re-released to work. These are companies that deal with medical stuff along with the DOT guidelines and restrictions and all that good stuff. So I get a hold of them. They tell me they have to have a full report of what happened while I was in the hospital. So I, I contacted the hospital and I had to pay for a full report and I, I get an email to them. So I finally got an email to them and then they contact me back a few days later saying that they got everything they needed but there was no release from the doctor for me to get back to work. I said, well, shit. I mean, that was the whole point. I was talking to the doctor to release me so I can get back to work. So, this was on a Friday, right? So, I couldn't get a hold of anybody over the weekend to get a release. So, I had to wait till Monday, which was this past Monday, actually. Uh, the 19th, 18th or 19th, because it takes time. But I, for like two weeks in a row, I found, I found out this information on, like, on a Friday. I couldn't do anything until Monday. It takes a few days from that point. And then it takes a couple days once you get that information in the vault uh, for them to contact you back and let you know the next step. But anyhow, I, I, this past Monday, I got the doctor's, I got the doctor's uh, release. Emailed it to them. They called me back and said, now we need your DOT physical. I'm like, they, they need my lawn. I'm like, yeah, Snyder's already got that. Apparently, Volt's the company that has that stuff, but they didn't have a copy of it. But with my orientation... Schneider didn't take a copy of it. They just verified the information. So I had to contact the company on with my DOT physical and have them email me a copy and I sent them an email. Great, no problem. Now finally on Friday, yesterday afternoon, about I know Thursday, about five o'clock, they call me. Say, okay, we got everything we need. You are now released to go back to work. I'm like, thank goodness. It's been a week. I've been a, a month total since I started working. A month not work means a month no paychecks. My savings is getting low. So I'm like, okay, thank goodness. But I didn't see that email until Friday, until yesterday. So, uh, well, they called me first, but they, I didn't see the email they sent to everybody until uh, Thursday or Friday. So once I got the, once I saw the email, I called in and said, listen, I'm ready to go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's get back to work. Uh, so we scheduled me a trip for this morning at 7 a.m. Today, being Saturday. Pick up a load here uh, in Tennessee at Walmart. I was going to go to Iowa. But as I was doing my pre-trip this morning, I noticed I had an engine light on. I said, well, shit. I think I had no big deal, just the engine light, right? So I stopped, uh, I went over to the to the shop. They did a diagnostic, and there was some sort of D-rate code, decompression, 25%, something or other. I don't know the exact code, that, the term they told me, but whatever it was, it was a, um, a decompression thing to where it was like I couldn't go like if, I, if they let me go I wouldn't be able to go no, no faster than maybe 45 mile an hour or something on the road I said, well shit that ain't gonna do but then they say well they can't get me in until tomorrow which would be Sunday I was like well shit so I called my TEL I was like listen there's damn air, air on this truck they can't get me into tomorrow so I can't do this load so I can't do the load they had to take it off of me fortunately they called me the shop called me about uh, it was about 10.30 Saying, hey, we can get you in early. Come on over. I'm like, oh, hell yeah. So I put it in the, I put it in the shop. I went inside the OC, hung out for a couple hours. I walked back over there. Just in time, they said, because they just pulled it out of, the, out of the garage. So my truck is fixed. My Nat is ready for tomorrow morning. I got a chat of contact them here shortly to let them know everything is copacetic and good and ready to go so I can get back to work tomorrow morning. But I'm fine now. My leg is pretty much healed. It's just got some, uh, still got some dry skin and some... Um, uh, all the scab is off now um, because you know once it blistered up and then it started popping and then we started peeling away the the old dead skin of course it's going to scab over and I've been using like this antibiotic cream and uh, this, this wash I've been cleaning it thoroughly daily and uh, yeah it's pretty much pretty much back to normal 
but it's still got some some redness and uh, some dry skin. So uh, they they said they didn't they couldn't determine what triggered it. Usually when something like this happens, it's not really got a trigger to it. It's just something that could happen in a, in a type two diabetic. So maybe I, I, I'm going to focus a little more on making sure I take my meds correctly and as often as I should. I know I, I know I neglect that quite a bit, but. Uh, well, not really quite a bit. It's just I don't remember to take my meds all the time, and I, I need to because uh, you know, like I said, this is uh, I do. My motto is you do what you have to, so you can do what you want to. And what I want to do is continue keep my CDL and continue driving. So what I have to do is make sure I take care of myself. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm trying. To, con to commit myself to a, what do you, what do you call it? a low carb, low calorie diet, diabetic diet, diabetic. That's what, that's what, that's what my doctor, that's what the doctor in the hospital said. Go on a low carb diet. Okay. I did that once before. I uh, lost 80 pounds, had a heart attack. <laughs> this was in 20, 2018. 2017. So, anywho. That's where I've been, y'all. Um, a couple of you messaged me wondering. Well, this is where I'm at. That's where I've been. But I'm going to get back to work tomorrow. So I, uh, it's the uh, first day of the pay period. So I need to get back to work so I can start making money again, get my savings back up so I can get my move and do the owner-op thing. So uh, that that's another thing. This has delayed my owner-op progress. But health first, right? So... Yeah, there's your update, guys. Start to expect some videos again here soon. I didn't want to do any videos during this time because there was a bunch of aggravation because of the process I had to go through. And it's not Snyder's fault. If anything, this has made me more dedicated, committed to Snyder through this process. There was some talk about them wanting to use my truck as a loaner truck while I was in the hospital. My TL wouldn't allow it to happen. I mean, I'm in West Memphis. I'm from West Virginia. I don't live here. When I was out of the hospital, this was my home. I had to, I, you know, I had to live in this truck. So he fought tooth and nail for that not to happen, because he knew I was going to be sitting here a while. And, and and I was. This truck's been here for a month. But finally, I'm cleared. My truck is fixed, and I should get back to work tomorrow. So, anyhow, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate the support on the channel. All the new subs and um, just, uh, just you know just hanging out. Have any questions or comments below? Leave them down below. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.